the reason I don't need to monetize my audience and sell you an island or a mastermind or, or a top <laughs> of the funnel is because I know how to make business otherwise. I built a wine business before. I didn't make a piece of content until I was 34 about business. I was 34 years old the day I made my first business piece of content. I was 31 years old the first time I made a wine piece of content. Mm. Really? Really. That's, yeah, see this is why That's time. great, that's great news. <laughs> Thanks. You know Kamal? How are you, man? It's good to see you. Come on, come on. All right, we're we'll coming with you. You have such a cool team, Gary. This is a, a great group of people. I appreciate like, it. Like Max remembered me. I was like, that's, that's cool. Like, it's really cool. I was so my, my best friend's name is Mark and um, Mark and this Mark worked together for a while. Your best friend Mark and this Mark. Right. Yeah. And we were talking about him earlier and how he grew up with nothing, like nothing, nothing. Your friend Mark. My, yes, he grew up with absolutely nothing. He's uh, he just exited a company called RV Share, who's the largest peer-to-peer -peer RV rental site in the world. Great company. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you and you were on the board of it. And he's just, he's the happiest person, but he was happy before too. And I think there is something to just the contrast between losing it all. If you, if you know you can be happy with nothing, like that's, that's like the, the secret. That it's what, it's, it's when you can be you risk tolerant. It's when you can be risk tolerant. So it's, you know why? Because you enjoy the game more than the stuff. Yeah. Like I almost weirdly fantasize of losing everything, taking <laughs> on the judgment that, see, he was full of shit, he wasn't that good, and then doing it again. I genuinely fantasize about that. I actually do too. I'm, every time I'm driving and I see like a homeless person, I always tell my wife when we're driving, like, you know, if I was homeless someday, I, 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 could, I, could, I could be fine, I'd get a job pretty fast, I'd hustle my way back, yeah. Well, I, we did a video once where I was talking about how I used to be really afraid of losing everything and having to work at Dunkin' Donuts again. <laughs> and then I was like, but I would be the best damn donut salesman ever. And, just, that, it just and comes, then- It just comes down to, do you love your process? Are you able to not care about judgment? And then how does that manifest? It's really real. I don't know, I'm just super grateful. And, I'm, and honestly, I think the newest version of myself over this last 20 years doing Content. It, these twelve years of doing content. The last couple years, this last run I'm on, this one I'm in right now, this is about genuinely realizing that I'm making an impact and just feeling a tremendous sense of responsibility to put out this content. Something out here because it's counter to a lot of what's being put out. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, true. You know, Chris, I I love the fact that you're recording right now, and I really appreciate it. But I feel incomplete without. One of my best friends drinking wine with us. Is there a way that we? I got it. Okay, cool. All right. Can we can we prop it or or something? All right. All right. Okay. So, if if that's a real that's offer, a we'll take that. Okay. But I want two angles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gary, there's 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 one thing I'm itching to tell you. Please. And it's uh, the last time I was here. Yeah. You said thank you. Welcome. I have hundreds of bottles of these that just arrived while we were traveling. So I have not tried this yet and I've been excited for it. Um, you said right now you believe me 92%. Yes. Hmm. And you were saying it from the context of... It was more than the time I saw you at the core club. That I remember too. Yeah. I don't know if I said it out loud, but I remember that as well. And, and you, you said that and it meant the world to me. And then you said, but right now you still only believe me 92% about there's no ask, there's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, like it, it purely is just a give yeah, yeah. play because it feels good. Yeah. And I believe you 100% now. So um, it, it has been a lot of personal work to get to that point. The fact and you're getting to this point now is so scary good. <laughs> Thank you. Honestly, dude, it's really, it makes me so happy. I just want you to know I get it now. And it was, uh, I don't know that I would have gotten there as quickly without your example. And so one of the things, like the reason why I put a lot of energy into seeing you once a year or so is because you're kind of like a mirror of where I'm at. Because I, I think you're really, 
clear internally about who you are, and it acts like a mirror to me of where I am. And so I just wanted to thank you for that. Makes me happy, bro. I really get it. And honestly, it's it feels so like it feels like it's not the alcohol. It feels warm. <laughs> it feels warm in my body, and it's actually to think about the kid that I met at the event to this moment is the actual dead example of the process that I'm trying to do at scale. Mm. I think some thing happened where I get the great blessing to be the communicator that takes a lot of alpha winners and eliminates the bad behavior and instills more. Mm. I, ju- I don't know what to say. It's super, it's super heady, it's super in the clouds, it's super, it can even be consumed as obnoxious. It's just actually, I still believe it. I believe that it took a very unique voice to take guys that look like you and me and actually get them to think empathy and long game and kindness was actually the cool thing, not all the other stuff. Because because there's a lot of versions that try to push it in, but but 26 year old Rick can't hear that person. <laughs> I love Rick. The poor Rick, man. But you know what I mean? That uh, poor guy. 26 year old Rick is not going to hear it from, you know, uh, uh, an academic. Yeah. Or from a scholar or from, you know. You're relatable. I was just, I'm, I'm that. I don't know what happened. I always kind of give my dad credit for scaring me straight from bullshit. <laughs> but there's a lot that went into it. But like, I, am, I almost feel like I'm on such a fine line. Close, I'm so close to it, but yet so far from it that it makes me connect with that person that's going through their process. How do you um, how do you keep that balance and walk that line? It's you know no different than like how he has epic hair, <laughs> like or like like or like he's in shit. Like it's funny. It's just it's what I am. It's what I've always been. Yeah. You know, it's funny to like refine. Yeah, you kind of like there's a, there's a consistency to you. It gets even crazy. You know, our team has been really finding old videos that have like eighty eight. Danny, you, he has a fresh eyes. Like I know you worked on this. Like it's ridiculous. It's two thousand nine. It's the same exact fucking words. Finding stuff that I can't even get in three sixty p. Like <laughs> it's all low, but it's him like yelling about Twitter. It's crazy. That makes me happy. It's so you wait, wait, hard wait. on TikTok, man. You're yeah, real this, hard on TikTok. Actually, this, it's so funny you segue that way. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I've been so consistent, and the only thing that changes is me trying to help kids figure out, kids, everyone, figure out where the underpriced attention is to put that into the system. The only thing that will be new about me forever is being good at what I've been good at my whole life, which is understanding consumer trends a little bit quicker than the masses, and then getting good at understanding the creative to fill it contextually to it. Because the craft of being good on Twitter is different than Instagram, different than email, different than Google AdWords. But it's the same game. And so right now, and the reason I always get excited about things like TikTok or actually LinkedIn right now, is I'm always trying to talk to the person that can't afford to run me. Mm. There's always mm. something that's underpriced organic. That's it's yeah. a big. But can I that's yeah, an uh-huh. question? Uh-huh. Like, yeah. I just saw your your yeah. interview with like the baby rapper. Yep. Like that makes sense for the youth market. Does that make sense for Ryan and Capitalism.com and like trying to go after that like younger TikTok market? I think that I think it could. I think it could. I think there's a couple things. Let me give you an example for Capitalism.com of that. Let me tell you the story of Social Cam. You remember Social Cam? It, had, it was like four seconds there. Who it was like that? four months. Who did that? I, I remember. Do you remember that name? Yeah. Remember, remember it was like that orange. I, I think I know who did that. It was so there was an app called Social Cam that him and I would remember because what we were doing back then. It had a moment, but it was fast. This I'm not talking Vine. I, this was like four months. It it hacked the Facebook algorithm at its peak. Got like a trillion downloads. <laughs> got all sorts of funny. I think it sold. It was like when the app, when they opened that Can you app. Google Social Cam sold? I'm curious, because I think Twitter or Facebook bought it back or some other third party. It was hot. It was hot. I used it. Made no sense for me to use it at the time. I wasn't anywhere in like, but what I learned about first party video, you know, phone to this, because that's the first time I did it, became the framework of how I used Vine which then became the framework of how I used Snap, which is why I exploded on Instagram. Mm-hmm. 2012, and it was sold to Autodesk. 
Autodesk. <laughs> That's when they opened up the I don't even know what that is. Uh, the developer platform. Oh, yes. right then, right? Actually, no, the development platform was 2000. You want to hear something crazy? No, that was earlier. Yeah, earlier. It was 2009. You know what's right. crazy about the developer platform? What? The first app I built was called Ask Gary V. <laughs> it it was, was and it was on it was Facebook, a, right? It was on Facebook only, and it was a wine app. You would ask me wine questions. What wine goes with fish? Yeah, yeah. all these yeah. different things. And it was like, AJ, to his credit, calls me the day F8 or whatever they were doing, or I mean, on TechCrunch, who knows? He calls me, he's like, I'm like in a wine deal. He's still in college. He's like, Facebook just did apps. I think this is gonna be important. Remember what you told me about the iPhone? They're doing it. I'm like, okay, that's important. And I remember we also made some sort of other, oh my God, I just remember. We made an app. AJ calls me, says we should make something. And actually, the first app was not Ask Gary The first app I made was called University Rivals. You would, you would, you would just go. It was like a basic. Do you remember Color Wars on Twitter? No. You remember that, Damien? No, really? Good for you. Zay Frank, remember Zay Frank? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In 2007, started. I think it was Zay Frank started something called Color Wars, and everybody on Twitter like picked the team, the green team, the yellow team, and we all changed our avatars <laughs> to have a color behind it. It was remember. I remember that. Remember that? I remember that. It's so like 2007, early Twitter, before like retweet. Had, there was, before there was retweet buttons, like you had to write RT colon <laughs> and control yeah. copy something. Yeah. So that's how it started. Um, so Color Wars, right. So Color Wars happened, it was hot for like a week on Twitter. So then I was like, Facebook, college. So we made an app that all you did was just click the team you were supporting, but we made brackets like Duke versus North Carolina, and then we just ran like, uh, grew, I don't, I'm trying to remember how we even did it to like grow virality. But basically it was like, hey Duke, go on this and click Duke because North Carolina's ahead of us. It went batshit crazy. <laughs> and then I think, Howard Linson or Dave McClure? No, Seth uh, Gold, uh, Seth Gold? No. Yeah. Goldstein, like the go- the guy from a social yes yes yeah, yeah, yes yeah, yeah. whose wife I think is actually credited for the term social media really yep you, we're talking about the same guy yeah, same stuff they rip they copied our fucking app they tried to buy it they built the whole company off it and then ran it to the ground correct <laughs> he, 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 he tried to buy it from AJ uh-huh. I was like I I was like I didn't know this is early tech for me I was like no we must be onto something no AJ don't sell it let's keep going and then like a week later they copied the whole thing uh, like the code might have even been like ripped it was that much of a copy uh, really interesting time you agree with me right that 2000 Six, seven, eight was really fast. You know what I? You know how I think that's good when that gets replicated, mm. Alexa. I think, really? yeah. Mm. I think the thing that's looming is full-scale voice AI devices really playing. Somebody creates a killer app. Everybody downloads it. It opens up the, the Pokemon Go of Alexa and Google mm. happens. We all get used to it, and it triggers. I really think voice is going to be a very big UI. I think it's going to take some time, but it's just too convenient. To Alexa, get me an Uber. That's just faster than me. Uh, ah, that's just interesting. Gonna, it's speed. Uh, it's that's more, I will get back into investing when that gets going. Because that's when I'm good. I'm good when a new toll, a new highway is created, and I'm very good at understanding the best toll booths. Which is why I understood search and browsers, which is why I understood social so well. I understood iPhone, social, okay, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook. That's when I'm at my best. So really, you think that it's what you understand best is what's going to capture people's attention before everyone else realizes it? Yes, and I don't guess. And when I guess, I lose, but I end up being right. So let me give you, like, literally, <laughs> think, I, I wish this, I can't find the video. D-Rock, we, we don't have this video, because I don't know if I made the video, but do you, you might remember this too. There was an app called Yobongo. You remember that? There was an app that got hot for four minutes at South by 2008 yeah. called Yobongo. It was people, dis- remember Highlight? Yeah, highlight got I hot? Highlight. So it was before Highlight. Okay. And I invested in it and several other people invested in it. And this great kid, Caleb, you know, that's what I learned like first kid rodeos, you, got, you can't just be the idea. It was, it was Highlight. It was people discovery, but I knew it was a hooking up app. Because me and AJ were gonna make a Facebook app a year and a half earlier called Booty Call. <laughs> that only worked that only worked 
from midnight to six in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> only worked, That's and it would be right. proximity, and you both had a match. That's brilliant. I think this That's kid. I thought Pete gonna be. These people are cu- these people are cute in my dorm. Somebody else says they're cute. It tells you, hey, you've matched. It only activates then. Booty call. Huh. That became your, that's what Yobongo was positioned as people discovery. So was highlight. Yeah. But I know humans, and then it became Tinder. What, what? And when was that? It was before Tinder. Oh yeah, like three. Years. That was the theory. My theory was dating apps were gonna become because the phone existed and we knew where we were. That you could really get into a good game. So and that's what happens. Flat out, what happened? Yeah. I'm I'm asking selfishly because I sometimes contextualize my path through your path. Uh, the thing that drew me to you. When I, back in like 2007 was this dude says he's gonna buy the New York Jets. I wanna buy the Indians. 10, 10 years ahead, I start watching. Um, and so I, you said something to me when we had, was it Core? Is yeah, that the club? club? And I had just had my exit and was having my, I'm full of shit moment. Um, and you're like, don't be in a rush. Yes, I remember that very much. And it was a, like a really like. That was a good that, one, that, I apologize that, for interrupting you. That was a good one because we had a lot of time. And Lewis was there and a couple other people. Yeah, Jay. And I just remember you were listening. That's what really drew me to you because I try to do that every time because I want people to win and be happy. But it's hard. It's hard getting off the high of something like that to hear somebody else, no matter how successful. What do you mean the high of something? You've got, you have this idea. Oh, oh, okay. You know, like I do it too. Like it's hard. Everybody does. When you're winning or when you have success, no matter even if somebody's more successful or what have you, you're, you, it's a nice validation. Like you, this is not hyperbole anymore. You've had success. At that moment to hear advice, that takes a lot of humility. And I took note of that. That's why the next time even happened. It was what you did in that one. Hmm. Appreciate that. That's why I believe you when you say what you did now. I'm watching you build the blocks. I appreciate that. It's very, it's very obvious yeah. to me. Thanks, Gary. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, I think I was saying <laughs> that I'm in, I'm in that period where I'm, I'm not in a rush, but I'm looking, That's like, good. like I'm, like I'm dating, if you will, yeah. next ideas. And so it's, I have a few that I'm kicking around, and it's just really helpful to hear you talk about when you were in that stage. How old are you now? I'm f- just from 32. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm still 32, so I'm still <laughs> at Wine Library. Um, you know what happened at 32? Were you? Do you remember when I was on Conan? No. So in 2007, That's... in July 11, 2007, I went on Conan, and the entire Web 2.0 community lost its mind because nobody besides Perez Hilton mm. had been on real TV from the internet. Mm. Mm. And when I tell you, front page dig, slash dot, Whoa. all uh, meta filter, uh, uh, TechCrunch, uh, Zay Frank said something, Rocket Boom said something, like the internet. I mean, I remember multiple people that were way more fancy than me at that point, Waxy.org, Neil Dash, like the, the blog yeah. establishment, hitting me up on Twitter and being like, you're doing this for, not, not those guys specifically, but like, People, uh, uh, Gruber, right, Daring Fireball. Like, people that I was like, ooh, because you know, as I was learning the tech world, I'm like, oh, these are the names. Hitting me up and like, dude, you're doing, it. like it was a bit, I was trending on Twitter that mm. day, like, it was like, you're doing this for us. I remember the moment very well, being in my green room, reading all the Twitter <coughs> DMs, and they're like, you're coming on, and I'm behind the curtain, and I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so corny, I'm doing this for Web 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> Before it was called social media. What did Conan ask you? Oh, you got a I'll well, it was wine, you. right? It's a it real, was a wine thing. I was gonna say it. It was yeah. really funny. Yeah. It, it went super viral. I like we ate dirt. It was a whole thing. It was a wine. It was that's a wine right. thing. <laughs> so that's where I was. I was just starting to make the early concepts of. Wait a minute. Maybe I'm not a wine retailer. Maybe I'm something else. Hmm. Think about that. Hmm. That's where I was. At 32. 32. Maybe I'm not a wine retailer. Think about that. Think about how much I believe in patience. You're <laughs> dramatically, professionally yeah. further along than I was. Not only that, I was going to leave two years Hot later. Damn. I was making 75000 a year. And in two years, I was about to leave and start VaynerMedia and have no money because wow. I didn't own Wine Library. And because it was a family business, I never paid myself a lot of money. And I was going I started VaynerMedia in the, in the conference room of Buddy Media. Is that, uh, so people really don't like, like you know. At its worst, when people want to razz me, they think my dad gave me everything. Yeah. At its best, I don't think people realize how crazy what I did was. There are very few people that 
have the stomach to build an enormous business for their parents and leave with zero. How did you know that VaynerMedia was the, like, the play? I knew it was the opportunity in front of me and I had this thesis that if I built a machine, at that point though, it, that was now 2009, at that point, Zucks, Travis, Saka, Ev, like I'm starting to wheel and deal a little bit in Silicon Valley and I had to ask myself, why do these people think I'm smart? Why is Fred Wilson? Why am I getting invited to the lobby in Hawaii? Why am I winning in this world that I think is leading the charge of the world? I'm a wine retailer. What am I doing here? Why are Mike Maples and like, why are these people listening to me? Yes, I have a gift of gab, but that can, that can only go so far with this crowd. Why do they keep coming back? Why is Zucks every time he comes to New York and staying at the Ace Hotel texting me and asking me to talk? when I already had decided he was gonna win the, the, big, the biggest company. So I took a step back and I said, okay, I'm really good at believing in myself and I'm really good at being humble. This is a point where I have to go and not be humble and like really challenge myself. Like what do I bring to the table that the people that I think that are about to win the world think I'm smart? And I decided it was communication. I decided wow. I was much better at most people in what I do as a human, which is why I think today I sit where I sit and what I thought I could, what I did for my, that's when I was like, wait a minute, actually I marketed a liquor store. I'm not the liquor store runner. I, I'm so much better at marketing that yes, I can operate. Yes, I'm a retailer. Yes, I'm a manager. That's why I built a big business too. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a special communicator. Let me build a Death Star. Like the, this is literally the terminology I used. If I'm the emperor, <laughs> and I'd like to think I'm a good guy, but like that's, but the Death Star is what I wanted to build, so I had to use that analogy, but I'd like to think I'm Obi one more than that, but if I'm, I'm gonna build a Death Star. It's not gonna just be me, because I can only be here with sucks right now. I can't be with you know Fred Wilson. Or, like I'm gonna build scale, and then I also knew something very interesting, that I loved people. And while Jason Fried and DHH are making fun of me that I hate remote working and I'm old and I don't get it, I knew that it's a self-awareness game. I believe in remote work if you're DHH and Jason Fried because you believe in it. And I believe in like smushing my team right next to me when I'm me because I like people and I like it. I like the serendipity of it. I'm a good operator, right? And you see Danny shaking her head and like I know her career here. Like it's through osmosis that I do my thing. And I can't do that through, mm. you know, any other Mastermind way. Mastermind effect. You know, and so. We've talked about that. And yeah. so, yeah. It's a big deal. I had a real self-awareness moment and then a humility moment. This is real, like very fancy people, the most fancy people, all the smartest people I knew said they were disappointed in me to start being. Mm. Really? really? Client service business, not smart. Yeah. I can raise a hundred million dollar fund, easy. I can start a brand, I can start a business, I can start a wine app, I can do all these things. I have the, like, in 09, I'd already kind of hit the scene. I'm one of the most followed people on Twitter. I'm getting a ton of accolades. I'm rubbing elbows with Kevin Rosen, Zucks. Like shit's happening for me. And I started a client service business. And people are like, you're not a, literally people later on have told me things like, yeah, we had dinner and like all agree that you're just not as smart as we thought you were. What I knew was I was playing long. What I know is that with this cloud kitchen infrastructure, with everything the internet does, with blockchain, the only thing left is communication. Mm. Everything else is commoditized. I'm, and it's my superpower. Would you would you help me understand how, like when I hear communication, Gary's good at communicating, and I can sell a billion of those capitalist pick T-shirts without using Gary. So, by by using the skill of communication through the skill set that you then leverage to clients. Scale. No, no, no. Clients is just the is the facade. I, I get that easy. your superpower is. Why Vayner Media? Because now I can do it at scale. Like, like again, a team, I, I, right? at scale, like a private equity firm or a hedge fund or a VC firm, I have built scale to be able to do empathy and 43 okay. other things. Okay. So Vayner Media is your engine. But this is all platform. Right. This is more WordPress than is ESPN.com. I understand. It's the, the vulnerability to this that is makes, That makes sense. You have to be a charismatic, an empathetic leader and wonderful person that makes people want to work with you for 25 years. Right. Otherwise it breaks, which is why nobody tries to do it. Yeah. Well, it's I've, not a good I've model, worked in the right? agency it's world work. and it's rough. It's, it's real, real it's, work. It's real work. It's yeah. real work, but, I, but I'm up for the task. Gary, would you tell us uh, about these baseball cards we're staring at? You know, look, 
most of, and you know this, a lot of what I'm, listen, we're very, well, not lucky, that's not fair. We've all worked, like a lot of people in this room, you for sure, you for sure I don't know enough about yourself, but like, we're in a place that's different than the majority of the world. I'm desperately, the garage sale stuff, there's nothing, you know, when I come, when I, when I hear what you said to me earlier, that feels really remarkable. That's at the top 1%, top 10%. Mm-hmm. When I get emails from people who are like, yo, on some real shit, you really helped me. I went garage sale on this Saturday, bought some shit, and made 80 bucks this week, and it really helped my family. Like we ate, yeah. like, like real stuff, like stuff that only my team really knows about me. Like my DMs are emotional, like real stuff. Like teach, you know, bring the, teach the horse to drink and stuff, you know what right. I mean? Like Teach a man to yeah. fish, yeah. So I'm teaching a man to fish. And I'm doing it where it's needed at scale. So a lot of these people really, really started making money, 100 bucks a week, 100 bucks a month. A lot of people who follow me on Instagram, YouTube, 100 bucks a month from garage selling has really changed their game. Just gave them a little breathing room. And you, you know? can so easily knock on in that direction too with who you are and what well, you talk about. Everybody like. Rad, like, again, back to the elite, like yeah. coast homies, they are like, you look stupid. Like, people like hear about me. Yo, you look stupid. Right. Like, you know, like, why are you doing that? Like, like you're on fire right now. You're like about to take that next step. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, you know, I, I love my friends. I'm like, you just don't understand what yeah. I'm up to. Back to, back to 92%, I'm like, you don't understand what I'm actually about. <laughs> you know? Um, so that really affected me, which led me to this. I'm just living, I'm just always doing what I'm doing. Watching, and I'm like, are sports cards about to pop? You know, it was really like that. <laughs> like, cause I'm watching, right? It's little things. It's seeing like a sneaker flipper post a sports card. It's going on, you know, which makes me then go Google sports cards. You read a Forbes article that sports cards have gone up 50, has outpaced Wall Street the last two years. I'm like, really? You, you, somebody won a charity fucking dinner and he was in a sports card business and he's telling me about it. That's real life. Hmm. Uh, obviously, I've been, I grew up with interest in it, so now I'm digging a little bit more. You know, all of a sudden, 1 a.m. going on eBay, looking up stuff is like fun instead of like a chore. I'm like, this is happening. Went to my little guys getting into it two years ago, taking them to <laughs> Cleveland to the national convention Woo! for you know for like one day. I'm like, okay, it's still a little seedy, older guys, nerdy, not great, but I'm like, but an undertone of like, oh, so some kids, you know, you see the fucking 48, you, I see the 53 year old me that could have been me if I didn't pivot, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's a little sad and a little like homey and a little like whatever. <laughs> But then you see a couple of kids who are like, again, look like cool, right? And like, they got like a fucking, like they got a fucking, like a Yeezy fucking sneaker box, but when you open it, there's some LeBrons in there. And like, I'm like, okay, okay. I mean, look, you know, I mean, I've been saying this, like StockX just started listing sports cards. Hmm. Like, like when I, a year ago, 18 months ago, I was like, they're about to get cool and work. People like really were like, okay, now you're just making up shit. And then when StockX announced sports cards a month ago, like people hit me up like, man, you really fucking know what the fuck mm. you're talking about. I'm like, because I don't predict. I don't predict. I didn't predict TikTok. <laughs> Tens of millions of users on it. It's just that people look for no and I look for yes. Yeah. And so look and look. Let me give you a real one. LeBron PSA 10s, which is like how these things get graded up here. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest company, PSA. And like, you get like nine, seven is not as good, obviously, six. LeBron PSA 10s, four months, uh, just say at the show, uh, no, before the show. So the show was July. In, in May, you could buy a LeBron rookie, which I have in the safe. Alex, do you know the safe combo? Can you ask Lou for it and open the safe? LeBron PSA 10s were 1100 bucks on eBay. And liquid, you could buy scale. That was the thing. My big hypothesis was the following. Gambling. So what I learned about the sports card world is I can pull in this box a $5,000 Kawhi rookie. Right now, you can, you can buy a pack of cards and pull up $200,000 Zion. Gambling. So gambling, they, they force scarcity. They created cards called one of one. There's only one of them and people have gone on tilt to own them. So scarcity, gambling, let me phrase, gambling, 43 year old males who grew up in the prime, who now have sons or daughters who are seven, who are into it. So the nostalgia, the whole way the toy market works. 
G.I. Joe, Transformers, they all reboot on the flip. Star Wars, that's how it works. It's generational. My Little Pony, Strawberry Shortcake, 20 year cycles, 20 year cycles. Is that why there's a Griffey card on top? Where? Just, the, yeah, the card that you had on stack, the yeah, top that, one was Griffey. No, I bought those Griffies for a different reason. But, okay. Um, and then number three, sneakers. Sneaker flipper kids can't get enough inventory. You, what are you gonna wait in line? What are you gonna run algorithms against things? It, it's super hard. But if you thought, like I did, that Giannis was the best basketball player in the world last year and was underpriced, like I did, you could do what I did, which was buy 700 of them at 200 bucks a pop, and then four months later when I was right, they were 800. LeBron, LeBron went from 1100 to 2500. Oh. In how long? In the last four and a half months. Well. Best performing assets out there. Yeah. <laughs> on, a, yeah. on a very serious yeah. note, on a very serious note, because of what I know about sports, because of what I know about consumer behavior, I know that I can make a lot more money in the next year on sports cards than I, than I can on real estate or angel investing or Wall Street. And it's liquid. Like, so now I'm a big dealer at 17, making real money, $4,000 a week at shows. And I'm like, I'm gonna invest heavy in one player next year. I've gone through the Kevin Moss, Todd Van Poppel, like those 90 rookies. I'm like, next year, I'm gonna buy thousands, tens of thousands of one rookie. So I waited, the cards came out. So I buy a box of Donruss 92 and I open it. And I'm, just, I, cause there's no internet. And the new Beckett and tough stuff isn't out. So I'm just opening up packs, looking who the rated rookies are. So I go through them and I read the back of the cards. But when I pulled the loft in, I'm like, is that Kenny Lofton the point guard from Arizona? Because uh, yeah. I was such a big March Madness yeah. fan. Kenny Lofton was the point guard of the final four yeah. Arizona team in 88. He was good. Yeah. Very good. So that kind of caught my attention, so I put him on the side. Then, by reading stats on the card and like the little bio, there was a Mariner outfielder named Patrick Lemon, who I thought was actually gonna be the best player. So now I have Lofton and Lemon. I'm like, one of these two guys is gonna be the guy. And I'm like, I think logically it's going to be Patrick Lemon, but emotionally, I think it's Kenny Lofton. <laughs> this is how I talked to myself even back then. So I go, you know what? I don't know. I'm going to do this. I'm going to flip it, uh, and and if one shows heads and one shows tail, this is literally in my room, on the ground in my carpet. Um, I, I mean, I'll never forget. God, I wish I filmed everything back then. I'm like <laughs> literally sitting on my carpet and, and flipping the cards, and the first time they both show tails. So I'm like, let's do it again. And I flip it up the second time and Lofton goes heads and Lemon goes tails and I go Lofton. I go on to buy 14,000 Kenny Lofton rookie <laughs> cards for less than a quarter. Uh, I bought some of them. And then <laughs> sold it during the World Series against the Braves for $48 oh, wow. a piece Whoa. to dealers in Cleveland. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I made a lot of money. Like for me at the time it was like, a lot. Hap uh, the, you, you asked me last time I was here if Arajay Davis's home run was top five moments in my life. One of the other ones in there was when the Indians traded for Kenny Lofton back in, oh, in 2007. Sense. I was pumped about that too. So I, I, I mean, oh my goodness. I, I like, did on Kenny Lofton a couple years What? Ago. Oh yeah. my goodness. It was one of the best. He's things. producing now, right? Yes. Yeah. Alex, can't figure it out? You gave me the wrong one. I tried too many times as well. <laughs> like, forever? Or? No, I think it, it times out for a little bit. I have an old red kids now. The, the city was on fire. It was like, it was electric was in there. It was just an that amazing. Team, so Charles Nagy and, and Joey Bell. And well, I'm talking about two, in 2007 Seven when they brought him back, it was like they brought back the old I uncle. I went to game one of that World Series. Did you? Yeah, because my best friend Brandon, who runs Wine Library, is a Cubs fan. I, I promised him first in eighth grade when we became friends that within the first two months knowing him, I've known him since I was 14. In the first two or three months, we become quick friends because he does baseball cards. And I go, Brandon, when the Cubs make the World because even back then it was a story, when the Cubs make the World Series, I'm going to take you to the first game. And I did it. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. You, you said you were trying to think of an Indians prospect who would match that. That would be Oscar Mercado right now. Yeah, Mercado, he's a real... Oscar, Oscar Mercado. So like, bro, I, let me give you a number because I ran the math. If you invested $8,000 into Cody Bellinger because he was a top, not a top 100 prospect, it, you would be able to flip it right now for two hundred eighty thousand. Jeez. Now, now I'm giving you an extreme yeah, example. Yeah. Minor league baseball is a real crapshoot, but like it's my favorite. This is a Brewer prospect. Like 
<laughs> high risk. If you want to talk about that's crazy. That's high that's risk. Crazy. What's in my yeah. safe is the easiest money in the bank. Why? LeBron, huh. Kobe, Bill Russell, Kareem. I think basketball is grossly underpriced. Huh. You could buy a PSA 8, which is a very good grade, Dr. J rookie for $850. Nothing. And I think old basketball players are gonna go through this like Marvel like renaissance. I think that, you know, because when I talk to the cool new basketball players, the Durants, the real cool guys, they, they really like the old school guys. Pistol Pete, Wilt. You know, there's something about 60s and 70s basketball cards that I think are uncomfortably underpriced. Pokemon, Magic the Gathering. I wasn't nerdy that way, because I was, but that was later, I was a little older. Those are two incredible places to invest in as well for the kids in the 20s and 30s who grew up with it. Real money. <laughs> real money, actually. Gambling, real money. And street cred. It's like fun to be right. I mean, like, if all my tech friends fun. loved Steph Curry, they could have made a fortune. There's no investment any of them made that would have outperformed if they bought up all the $100,000 worth of Steph Curry rookie cards seven years ago. It's amazing. Um, Gary, I don't, I don't know how much time we have, and I have a few rapid fires that I would really like to hit. Let's go. Um, well, th there's a couple asks in there, Please. and I'm really nervous about the ask. I feel like I'm asking a girl on a date, no um, so I'm just going to throw them there. Uh, number one, could I have more red wine? Yes. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've got the forty one. Okay. Okay. I am really enjoying this. It's really good, right? This this is such a big outcome. If this is sixty five dollar wine that we're selling for twenty bucks because all the farmers hooked me up. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That, like this was one of the more fun arbitrage projects I've ever done. <laughs> like everyone's like, man, your wine's so much better. I'm like, yeah, I mean, people gave me, people, you know, when you have 25 years of equity with people, they really hook you up, yeah. you know? Um, point number one, yeah. um, I've, I've learned in the last year or so that your thesis of just being in a give place all the time feels really good. Good. And that it, it like, it costs, it costs too much both emotionally and financially to get out of that place. And um, yeah, Very smart observation. Chris has been with me for about two years. He's a different person than when we started working together. I'm a different person than we started working together. Mar Mark is starting to work with us kind of on the side, advising us on strategy. And I, I just wanted to tell you that like, I'm still a work in progress, but I'm, I'm committing to as much as possible operating from that place from Brother, now on. I don't know if there's a more practical business maneuver I, than karma. I, I, I agree with that. I don't know. You know this, we run in enough similar circles but haven't spent time. Yeah. Reputation from people that have actually spent time with you. Because by the way, there's people who think I'm a snake oil salesman and I suck. But that's only because they're in a bad place and, they're not, and they don't know me. Yeah. Reputation from people that actually know you is the entire currency. You know what's funny, Gary? I've been following you for, I don't know, probably four or five years. And you actually helped me through a lot of bullshit that I dealt with. But you're mm, even better in person. You're, you're more <laughs> obviously genuine. I understand that. Like, I always knew you were genuine, but... You know what's really funny? You, you know, the, something? There was a kid. Z is Zane gone? Yes, I just left. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I bet you if I... How close is he? There's how Gary long ago? I know. <laughs> so, Call him. Get him back here. So that's this, the Gary Angle. <laughs> I really, 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 really want. I really want to get this kid back. I hope he's not far away. I had a meeting with him today. Uh -huh. Super fan. Commented on every single post. I'm at a talk in Dallas. He in the Q and A asks to intern or get a job. I said, oh yes. Yeah, him. Oh yeah. I yeah, showed yeah, a clip recently. Yeah. He sat down here. I'm not gonna. Uh, if he comes back, I'm gonna save it for him. Uh -huh. But I'm gonna build on it. But go ahead. I think what? You oh. Yeah, I just <laughs> the 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 story that I tell that always changes people's mind because some, somehow I've among certain people I become Gary Defender, but like, people are like I don't know hustle porn. Uh, well, it's not. But the thing that, that the story story. that I tell that always changes people's mind is that when we were at, when I hired you to speak at the event, and you came backstage, I'm expecting this high energy like. Like, all right, let's go, come on, <laughs> let's go on stage. And he like slipped in the back, was really quiet. And my daughter was like nine months old. And he's like, Pam, is she sleeping through the night? Like no phone on him. And then this, this is the moment that I was like, all right, I'm on team Gary. 
I'm on stage and I do my intro for bring on your new dog, ah! and he comes out very slowly, walks up the stairs, and as he's coming up the stairs, he he does this. And then walks up on stage and then goes, all right! <laughs> <laughs> and it was like Zane, you were were you wait a minute, he was in the back he teleported me. What? I texted him 911, come back, and he Zane, was like, I'm in the elevator. Were you in the poop? Were you poop? Hey Zane. No, I was going down the elevator. Hi Zane. Ryan. What's up, Zane. man? Nice to meet you, man. How's it going? Mark. 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 Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, man. How's it going? Mom. Nice to meet you, man. How's it going? Thank you. Zane, Zane. Mark was just saying, like, yeah. it's so interesting to me that you're more genuine here than I see on video. And I was oh. like, it's funny you said that. Today, this kid Zane who works for me, and I was looking for you, who was like a super fan, engaged in everything. Yeah. Um, like, just was, like, what was, what's your biggest, you've been here what now, two? Just about two months. Tell, yeah. tell, when I asked you today, what was your, what was the biggest thing that surprised you? What did you say? Yeah, the biggest thing that surprised me so far, and it's funny, like Gary said, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Like, that's how I, I like, kind of hacked my way here. Like, it was just <laughs> a crazy story. But the biggest thing that surprised me so far is, like, genuinely how involved Gary is on the content. Like, I, huh. you know, I know that he was involved, but before I came here, like, I'm sure he's touching a little bit, reviewing it, but he's like actually creating all the context. He's creating the copy, like he's huh. making it. And I didn't expect that. Like, I didn't expect the deep involvement that he has. And Mark, what the punchline of that actually is, like this whole game right now, like you on the outside, but being kind of team Gary. Always. To yeah. right now, more. To him, the basically here's the punchline. To Alex, who's sitting out there, Fundamentally, this is how I judge everybody and how I judge myself. Whoever knows the most, what do they think? So I just think of it yeah. as pieces, right? Whenever you right now got a little you. closer, which gives you even more belief. He got even closer than you. He has even more belief. Alex, who has all my information, <laughs> who like, Alex, let me ask you a question. When you started as an admin, like, out of all, back to like the point I'm making to these guys about like, you knowing me way better than anybody in this room, because that's you're my inbox. Yeah. There's shit that goes down. <laughs> what was the biggest the emotional DMs. surprise? I mean, you Alex worked here for two years before, eighteen months. Yeah, mm -hmm. eighteen months at the front desk, interacting with, which is a big job here actually, which is a real gateway to like being admin. Um, what was the biggest thing that was surprising to you? Like just your life in general, or your inbox. Me, how I roll. You answer a lot of emails compared to like what he receives. Like just random people. So Gary's like, cool, yeah, great, whatever. And I'm like, whoa, hands down. Two, Gary's available. He's like, just text me, it's fine. Cool, I got you. And I'm like, most CEOs, they don't even know like the people like in the corner. You know, Gary's like, oh hi, Jill, how's it going? And I'm like, oh wow. If Gary doesn't know, then he's like, hey, you must be new. How's it going? Most people, people don't do that now. You know. But Gary, instantly, he's like, oh, I remember you. Next time, he's like, oh, I remember that time. And Gary's like, I definitely remember this situation. Period. Hmm. All the time. He just needs like one little thing to kind of like remind him and then that's it. Which I, I think is amazing. Hmm. It's effortless. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, it, it's so interesting to listen to Alex. She doesn't even know the stuff she knows the most important. <laughs> because you're so wired for privacy. So I'm so wired for privacy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Even though I'm so accessible, Alex knows when I fund people's like. Oh, Alex oh, is so yeah, tricky. Yeah, like, yeah, like, you're so. <laughs> so it was so. I was wondering where you're gonna go. Mm -hmm. You're so in the cocoon. That was like interesting to me. Like the point I'm really making, the yeah. things that I am singularly most proud of in the world, not a person knows. Yet everybody thinks mm -hmm. of self promoter. I believe it. I'm comfortable promoting business. That's business. Right. The real humanity. Mm -hmm is quiet as fuck. The people I don't fire, the, the people I support, even though they shit on us, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. random acts of kindness, the real shit. Mm -hmm. That's true, I mean, obviously I know. I was just like. Yeah, so I get a blank. I love you for that, I love you for that. I was impressed. <laughs> so that's it, that's how I decide what I think of a woman or man. Whoever's the closest, if they admire you the most, then you're winning. Yeah. I really think most people are doing it the reverse. I am shocked. They want going the public this to admire them. That we all things. run in. I was naive. I'm shocked how people act as good people and then anybody that's actually close mm. to them hates them. Mm.
people choose money. People are broken. People are insecure. Mm. So that's so true. That's the game. Yeah, that's what I think about a lot. Yeah, because that's how it plays out. I'm not surprised, but but it's still it's, good. It's great. You know, it's good. To, it's good to know for but sure. You know what I think we do on that, by the way. And I think I think Zane did it. I think Alex did it. I think we protect ourselves to not be disappointed. I think the reason Zane thought that coming in is you, first. I think people are just first of all. I have a lot of energy, and I'm very efficient, and I'm very good at not wasting time. Everybody takes an hour meeting for something that's eight minutes. So I'm really good at that game. Two, I think there's a subconscious protection. Zane is a real fan. So he comes here, he's probably subconsciously protecting himself. If there's actually, everybody's doing mm. it for me. So he's protecting that when I disappoint him, mm. it won't hurt that much. I actually believe that's right. true. Mm. Yeah, that way if you turn out to be a dick, he's like, well, I kind of like, the whole that, time. That's why they have that great story of like, don't meet your heroes, right? Yeah. Like, like I said to him today, like my big goal is to be the reverse of that, to be better than you thought I was. Mm. Yeah, well, mission accomplished. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Mission I'm gonna say that I'll credit you every time, but I love yeah. that. Thank you, I, I know that. you will. I, I like how you roll, I like you and your roll a lot. I like, yeah. how you, I like what I spent time with you guys. I was so pumped just now when I walked in and saw you. Thanks to him, man. It was beautiful. Well, I got really Thanks shook more. with your thing, man. I'm so glad you're okay, Jesus. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for my first line after the experience. It makes me happy. Isn't that a cool one, though? I'm glad you picked I'm up on really, that. I thought that was an, that's an important Would you uh, Would you grab the his his new edition. This is Kamal's new book. The Galley is coming out in January. Dude. Dude, come on my podcast. I, I am selling an uncomfortable amount of books. For I would me. Be Everybody's hitting me up now. I don't somebody leaked so I I could feel it. It happened six months ago. I somebody must have been on my show that sold an uncomfortable amount of books because now everybody and I mean <laughs> fancy people. People that don't even like me are trying yeah, to be on the show. This actually already saving lives. I have people, like senior executive Harper Collins are calling me like saying they're using it, it's saving them. Good for you, bro. I, I'm, uh, I'm actually excited about this. When is it coming out? Whoa, 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 whoa. He just stole my galley copy. Oh, okay, take it. No, 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 no. I'm kidding. Know, he has, way, he I has a few. He has a few. No, no, by the way, I'll give it, by the way, honestly, it's a real shit. I'm he has real a shit. few, it's okay. It's okay. You'll read it, I won't. I will. I will die yeah. there, so take it. Okay. I'm just excited about having him on the podcast. Thank you, man. When does it come out? The 7th of January. That's great. Great. But I'm here, so we can do it anytime. That's what we'll do. I love the whole new you, new year shit. I love that shit. Context matters. Thank you. Well, that's a great segue to my ask. Okay. Um, so my first book comes out in May. Last time I was here, I asked, would you give me a quote that I could use? And you said, no, I don't read, but I'll give a quote about you, if that's and, okay. And I will. Okay, you're comfortable will. with that? Yeah, I appreciate it. Now. I appreciate it. Thanks, Gary. What are you going to write about? It's called 12 Months to 1 Million. It's the entrepreneur's path to building a real business and hitting seven figures. Good for you. And the first and, and thought, honestly, you know well, hold on. You know that's you, a little bit against my shit. Well, hold on, so hold on. <laughs> let, let Kamal comment on this. I can't the first half is actually goes into what the reality of it is. Cool. The first I, I, half I, I, is like, this is I'm way excited. harder than it I'm thinks. Excited. I'm excited. This I is what I wish somebody had. Cool, I think. Thanks, Like, Gary. literally, it's going to be like, as douchey as this title is. <laughs> like, literally, and honestly. Love it. Let me give you a real interesting, yeah. and I, I know you're smart enough for this. That's gonna make it Do you better. know why I almost didn't have a case with steel? Everything was greed out. I got paid nothing. I didn't give a fuck about the money. The number one reason it took a while to negotiate with K-Swiss was because of this. I, I refuse to only wear them. To only wear huh. K-Swiss product. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be true to you. My quote on the back of your book with that title, saying exactly what I just said, is the best thing for your book. Oh yeah, I'm pretty pumped that you just said as douchey as this no, title I is. I love that. What's the other half? Look, this is just a dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. Gary V, follow me. Two one two nine three one five seven three one. Honey over vinegar, kindness, empathy, compassion, good human. I want to fucking win. I want to build the biggest fucking company in the world. And what's wrong? People with that? struggle with that balance. We're demonizing on the coasts the empire part, and we're incapable of it, the honey part in the middle. That resonates, that resonates a lot with me. I feel like in my circle of friends, obviously, Everyone in this room, I think, is more probably more successful than I am at this point. But I love, like the I love the fact that you had it. Within the group of people, I love that. I love that. I believe in that shit so much. Yeah, yeah. and it wasn't the it, reason I loved it so much was the way it was delivered. I like. Good for you. Keep going. Well, the people that I spend a lot of time with now, I'm I'm in this phase where I'm trying to grow. Okay. So I've spent time with a lot of people that are actually not as far along as I am, and um, they 
seem to not be able to hold those two ideas. Like I tell them all the time, hard. like I want to be a billionaire. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to help this these people. And I want to do all these things. And they don't believe that I'm genuine in it, in it coming from a from a good place. And it's and, like and by the way, it's hard to you convince might, people. By the way, you also real. might be in a in a process of not being all the way there. You're so young, you know. Like even the terminology of I want to be a billionaire is an interesting framework. Yeah, it's a very quick off put. I talk about the process of trying to buy the be buying the jets as opposed to being yeah being the owner yeah. Uh, or maybe you may. I'm actually picking up uh, wordsmithing is a very interesting sure. conversation, but that's the other part. Like like again, I mean honestly, it's hard to let go of people's opinion. You know, it's hard to let go of uh, not wanting to look, show people that look, you mean it when you're. What's happened is we're in this time now where it's all cyclical. You know, in, in the mid two thousands, like I'm going to be a billionaire is heroin. It's a dirty word. <laughs> it's it's very, a dirty, very word. dirty word. And I have a lot of empathy for both sides of the argument. But what's happened is overcorrection. People who don't want to do anything. Look, this is how. <clears throat> listen, let me tell you something right now. If I go take Marxism, chop it up, <laughs> change a couple of the adjectives, and tweet it. Everybody in Silicon Valley and New York mm -hmm. will herald me as the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Believe me, I know. So it's a tricky line. On the flip yeah. side, to me, cruel, being cruel to someone is fundamentally unacceptable at all costs. Yeah. To me, capitalism, where you try to change the rules for your advantage, isn't capitalism. Correct. Amen, brother. It's corruption. So yeah. like, to me, like, it's, these yeah. are nuances. And this is why we're in a place where it's going to take some time for us to get back into some sort of middle because we're pulling so ex it's just it's like middle what? two different points of view they overcorrect for each other and they stretch their kid middle what I i'm fascinated by people who don't understand that arguments on the conservative side and the liberal side the republican side and the democratic side that there are actually good strengths in both like it is bad for eighth place trophies Mm -hmm. I love AOC in a lot of ways, but you can't parade somebody on video and say, this girl had a dream to go to college. Like, you know, I have a dream for a lot of things. I have a dream to have a house. <laughs> can, can you, guys, can you, you know, you start getting, you know, things become slippery. Yeah. You, when you go into ideology, I'm telling you again, I believe that Marxism is one of the most unbelievably written documents ever. He's a great writer. It's just compelling. Yeah. It's compelling. Yeah. If you like, and, and sounds yeah. Where came yeah. From, Correct. You Correct. You know, and and it's just honestly, it's compelling. It's like like I genuinely want everybody in this room, especially for me. I can't speak for others. I wildly want people to be happy. Uh huh. Like wildly, I've come to realize. So, it could be compelling. The problem is there's inherent animalistic truths. And we're animals. It, it's, it's, it's compelling when done privately. Like, I want to take care of people I love. I want everyone to be happy. It's when it's done via force. Yeah. That now, it, now it's no longer a choice. But then you decide where force is. I mean, like, I give up, you know, 60% of every dollar I make to have people that I think are losers spend it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you give, you give up 60% yeah. of your dollar so that government can okay. allocate, can, can waste okay. it, <laughs> and then so. <laughs> okay. Got it. God bless you, Gary. You know, people that I do not believe are practical practitioners who are either trust fund babies or ideologicals or like, no real people. I have unbelievable disrespect for politicians. Yeah. Unbelievable. No different than I have people in education. Like, how can you believe in the current education system? How? That just eliminates any level of practicality. We're making kids, 80% of schools still make kids memorize shit when the answer's on their phone. Gary, Gary, since you don't predict, don't you think that the majority of Americans now are socially liberal and economically conservative? No, that, like, I think that's the coasts. You think that's the coasts? Yes, I do. I think really? at its, let me phrase, I believe at the coasts best, it's that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think you find that as like, a lot of people are not socially liberal, bro. Yeah. Bro, people are not socially liberal. Like, there's some inherent suppression going on. There's some, man. No, no. I, I feel like you mean more like rural, rural, rural America. Rural America goes further than you think. More importantly, let me say something else. There's a shocking amount of people in all parts of America that are willing to look the other way 
for their financial best interest. Mm. Yes. Mm. Sure. That's where the love yeah. really comes in. I understand. The thing that I'm most proud of is that I'm willing to lose everything because then I would believe that I deserved it. Watching old dogs who were killers in their 20s and killed the old lion, but when they become the old lion, want to use money to completely yeah. protect it. Yeah, I I disrespect it so much. Like I'm look, I'm real, I'm honestly more like an athlete. I believe the best. I, I actually really need to start meeting some Hall of Famers and ask them the question, when. And by the way, when I tell you that Kobe and fucking Brett Favre, like I am convinced that when I start, I'm actually going to do this now. I decided. I'm actually curious to ask an athlete of all time status. Kobe would be at the top for me because I just respect that mentality. When was the moment you knew it was different? That's a good question. Right? I'm genuinely looking forward to being 78, having a health scare, having a tragic death in my family, uh, a world event, something that shakes me and says, you know what? I don't want to go. I, right now, forget about ideology. I, the human, don't want to go 15 hours a day in my passion anymore. There's other things I want to do. Mm. That will happen. That could happen tomorrow. I, th- that I like. Versus what I see from a lot of 80 year olds who are like trying to pay off politicians, change rules to keep their monies up. I don't care about the money. I care about the game. I almost am looking forward to when I lose my step. <laughs> I'm in my prime, or I actually don't even think that. I'm in the early parts of potentially my prime. The dawn of it, right? I'm curious what it feels like when I can feel, like right now, I feel invincible. I don't, sure. There's not a single That's person. Great. LeBron. It's beautiful. Like, like, Bezos, though, I really love that. <laughs> so that one is the one I probably put the most on a pedestal. That Amazon and Bezos in a lot of ways is probably the biggest manifestation of what I believe in a lot of ways. They're just, they're consumer centric. Mm. Yeah. And in that blind consumer centric nature, which is what I am with my audience, with my businesses, they have complete dominance. It's the only company I've met where all the senior executives I've run into are, they're all focused on what's best for the customer. Never Google, never Facebook. Correct, any correct. By the way, I, Amazon brother, it's why I believe them from day, I agree. Mm. I, it's, I couldn't agree with you more. It's why I think I'm gonna be the greatest entrepreneur. I believe that when it's said and done, that I will be put at the highest pedestal. I will not make the most money, but I'll make enough to put me in the conversation, but I'm just gonna bring the most value to the game. There's nobody even remotely close right now that is, a, the only people that are trying to put out content for people are trying to trick people into their own money. And everybody who actually is a great entrepreneur is selfish. I prom- not putting out shit. I promise you that I will at least try to match you, that. I believe you 100%. Yeah, I, I, I believe you 100%. Thank you. Because I believe that's actually my legacy. That I'm gonna I, frame it I, and the understudies under- I believe that about you. I believe that. Because I, because you, I think you turned that page. Like you were the first person to turn that page. I think so too. And like my context, I'm completely committed to it. My context of so, growing up was always about the do this so that you can have the ask. Correct. And you were the first example in my life that there it was just about doing it because it was the right thing. And it was different, and and and, and not being uncomfortable with asking because there's a level of practicality to it, but being remarkably okay with a no. You know, there's one thing that makes you special, man. I've known you for a while. I've seen you grow, and you're sincere. Thanks, Kamal. You've always been sincere. That's like that's, that's your rock solid. Foundation. Thanks, Kamal. And, so and, like, and in my opinion, the day I met you, you had you had subconscious aspirations for sincerity, <laughs> but you weren't. I think that's a I think that's a fair analysis. I that was my sense, Kamal. I can I can almost guarantee that I I won't get it right. right? Thank you. I can almost guarantee I won't get it right every time, but I promise you that I will at least try. And to me, that is, the reason I think I'm attracted to you in return is you're the manifestation of my hypothesis. Mm -hmm. That I'm the right guy for the hundreds of thousands that look like you, and had I not come along, or if somebody else came along and did it, that this is the little switch. The little two sentences that we just said, and I know you know I'm right. I just know. That's what I know. Thanks, Gary. It's a real thing, and, and I'll tell you why I'm in a real spot. When we met, and then we, even at Core Club, which not that long ago, yeah. 14 months ago, yeah. I don't know, I'm trying to, 
the little over area. What has happened in the last six months, something's turning. And I'm kind of like, okay, I have a real responsibility here. I gotta keep this going. I'm changing the conversation. I'm watching it. I'm watching fucking thugs yeah. put out fucking Instagram posts that say gratitude. <clears throat> I was gonna say, you're changing culture. <laughs> you're changing culture. I see it. And, and I say it matter of factly. I think I'm, I, I'm watching it and it's almost too heavy. Like the way it's I say responsibility. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> not even that. It's like, I can't believe this is happening. It's almost like, did I just see the coolest rapper or this, like this scumbucket kid who used to put up ridiculous content, just say kindness is cool. Real shit. It's really cool. Yeah. Meanwhile, to your point, people get caught up. When I wrote, when I put Hustle on the map with Crush It, it was 2009. Yeah. The economy just collapsed. Yeah. Like work ethic mattered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Work, work ethic always matters. There's, n I literally say the word happiness and balance way more than I say hustle, but people want to demonize. Um, just to complete the point, yeah. I, I, I promise you that I will at least try to continue that legacy and carry that torch. Bro, I, I, I actually think you won't try. I think you see it. I think what made you successful is the same reason you're gonna do it. This has nothing to do with anything else. This is actually a selfish act. You're aware that it's better, and then you're like, fuck, how can this be better and feel better? Sorry, say that again? Act out that legacy. Like, you, like I actually believe you because I know enough about you, and I'm, it's almost the same way I feel about myself. You're 100% gonna do it, because it's better on it both is. fronts. It, right. like, this it is what is. the people don't get it. Right. You're gonna get yeah. more of what you wanted selfishly right. by being more That's selfless. Right. That's right. Yeah. It's actually true if you're talented. That's a big part of this equation. I, I think I, people struggle with that part. <laughs> like some people genuinely don't have the talent to be able to play out the selfless play. You have to be good. The reason I don't need to monetize my audience and sell you an island or a mastermind or, or a top <laughs> of the funnel is because I know how to make business otherwise. Mm. I built a wine business before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't make a piece of content until I was 34 about business. I was 34 years old the day I made my first business piece of content. I was 31 years old the first time I made a wine piece of content. Mm. Really? Really. That's, yeah, see this is why That's time, great, that's great news. I, course, because you're gonna <laughs> walk down, news. you guys, I gotta go right now actually, you're gonna be like, fuck. Gary only hit the scene this age, I've already had an exit, I'm fucking this, like you're just starting. If you're good enough, forget me. Sidney Frank started Great Goose at 78. Kentucky Fried Chicken started by a 70 year old. Vero I think was 40 or 50. Like, people are confused. I would rather invest yeah. in a 50 year old entrepreneur over a 21 year old yes. entrepreneur mm. every day of the That's interesting. by a thousand. Yeah. Gary, can I um, list off what my rapid fires were and you yes, can no, answer no, whichever no, no, one you want? No, no, no. So, just to complete the point on how would you like me to follow up with you on a Gary quote? Gary Vaynermedia from... will. Okay, cool. Is it okay if I put it on the front of the book? Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. But I gotta give some real thought to the to the. Okay. I I do like, like the opening of it. You might listen. I have some empathy because I'm really gonna write that. It's fine. And that's an interest. You have to strategize that. It could be a. It, it's a. It's an interesting concept. I will take it. I believe Thank that's you. a smart answer. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, so my rapid fires were I my I'm having a son in six weeks. Wow. And uh, my right. daughter is four. Yes. Every time she sees slime, she says, "Let's sell it on Instagram." Really. Yes. Uh, because. My daughter, on the other hand, is like, no, daddy, I don't want to sell anything. Well, one, one, of, the, one of the ways we bond is we, we talk about Lil V. So, I, so uh, she actually asked me when are there going to be new episodes. So I, I would like to hear if there's any advice you have about raising a son uh, based on how you were parented and you raising yes. a son. And my, my, my other rapid fire was, do you still think Joe Biden can win? Yes. And really? that's surprising to me. And... Uh, <laughs> I had one more in there, Joe but I'll Biden let you will go this too. The general election, Joe Biden might not get the nomination. Uh, mm. I would take that bet. Okay. I'll take that bet. Joe Biden's the only person that can beat him. If I had to really, really bet, I pro at this second, I still think Trump would win, mm. but I think Biden can win. What if Bloomberg ran? Too late. Too late. Um, I will. I will make a bet with you okay. if he gets the nomination. Yeah. If when if if I'm wrong. Ready? When the second. 
I need to see, you'll appreciate this, I love context. I need to see how he gets the nomination and whatever context happens there. But if he does, and nothing alters how I see it, because he needs to have sharp elbows to win. He has the sharpest elbows in the field. He just, those sharp elbows are at his detriment to get the nomination. I understand. Uh if, I, if I gotta watch, if he can stay sharp to the nomination, then I'll make that bet. Okay, my bet would be if Biden gets nomination and wins, I'll donate $25,000 of pencils of promise. If he loses, then we have another glass of wine. Easy, well listen, that I already am willing to make the bet now because I'm more than happy to have another glass of wine. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, what, uh, oh, oh, my, my, last, my ready, last point. I, let me give you the sun answer. Yeah. And I gave it to you real quickly already. It makes me happy that my daughter doesn't want to sell a single thing. Oh, I agree. I have no interest in trying to make an entrepreneur. That's it. That's it. I, I just Bro, mean that's like... that's the answer. Okay. The number one way to raise a child is to reverse engineer their truth and support the fuck out of it without creating delusion. My parents did that for me. Me too. And, so I, many, and I'm it. so Your grateful for that. is you're going to have a lot of resources. And the I discipline understand. to hurt feelings yeah. when they don't understand is ridiculously hard. Okay, that's good advice. I have my gold son, so I have that to his two kids. How Tom said that. Thank you Fake for that. environments. I believe the greatest thing, uh, we, we're about to put out a video, like, because I went into it on the ride to my keynote, just I just said. Fake environments. You know, kids running around. You mean shelters at home by, made by parents? Our friends and contemporaries, all of us, by the way, who are actually getting paid still in their 20s and 30s, some amount of money by their parents, all of it, some of it, make pretend they don't, is leading to great amounts of depression. Hey, I saw we good, could talk I about that on the way over here. Yeah. Yeah. When, you do shit, when, you earn yeah. It. Yeah. when you earn it yourself. Living you within yeah, you appreciate it so much more. We gotta put that on pedestal again. Uh, my last question for you is, I, I've been doing some business with the guys at the Daily Wire. Okay. They've been really, really interested in having you on their Sunday sermon. Okay. It's about a million downloads a day. Okay. I just want to know if you wanted Second, that introduction. Go. Okay. Go. Cool. All right. Super Appreciate it. Ready, Thank, Thank you so much, Gary. <laughs> Gary, one last thing. Thanks, man. When we were just talking now. Yeah. That's the last time I'm going to say that I want to be a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> I think about the amount of times through my life where somebody said something thoughtful, whether directly to me the way I did to you or indirectly and I just heard it and it completely forever changed the way I framed it up. Yeah. Happens all the time. That, by the way, that's why I was sitting here. Like when you get into these- It was these, just bad words. These are the moments. These are the mo There's nothing wrong with the ambition. Right. It's, it's about creating context. Absolutely. I needed to do it. Everybody thought I was a douche because I'm gonna buy the jets and see you're gonna fucking, I was like, no, no, no. It's chasing it. Yeah. Mm. That's, I love my process. I myself had to realize that. It only took when I started leaving real money on the table in the last decade, time after time, that I'm like, oh wow, I'm, I didn't even know that about myself. How about that? You guys are so young. <laughs> I did not know the majority of things about myself at your age right now. Thank you for I that. I didn't. I believe it. Nobody was talking <laughs> thoughtfully, right? We didn't, it was just not like this. We stumbled our way through this. Nobody was talking thoughtfully. We didn't, we didn't have the internet for all these thoughtful voices. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm the person I wish existed. That's and, what I'm actually that's doing. Right. Remember we talked about that earlier, like we, be, we become the parents that we wish we had for 100%. the next generation. What I'm doing is 15 year old me needed me. That's, that that is, would have been my follow. I yeah. so get that. Yeah. Yeah. I so get yeah, that. that it would have saved, it would have seen, it would have fucking yeah. fast and forward now, my And now career. it's our turn to keep propagating Correct. that. And that's what, and that's what, like a lot of what I do with hip hop and sports is to be cool, oh to actually God. get you to do it. I fucking get it now. I've always wondered why you were so into the hip hop culture. It's because you realize you have the power to change. Hey, I love it. Hey, you love it. Right. And you realize you have the power to change the culture. Kelly behind Slater, it. the street, the skaters, and the surfers love me. Notice I'm not doing it because it's not authentically me. Mm -hmm. I'd love to go there because I'd have a whole group of long haired blonde guys hearing me too. I can't do that yet because it's not authentic. Right. Hip hop and sports is authentic. It's you. It's me. Yeah. It's my interest. It's what I grew up with. Get it. Yes. Thank you, Gary. Thank You're welcome. You. Really appreciate you. Pleasure, Thank guys. You. Take care. Right. Enjoy. Right. Hey, by the way, hang with the team. Do shit. Do okay, deal. Right. We'll do. Yes. It is really good one. Exactly.